Moving on to your long-term outlook for the U.S. Um, Paul, you know, the U.S. has rallied strongly from the sell-off. Is there further to go? Obviously, we've seen a recent sell-off in the last couple of days. Is that telling us valuations have got ahead of reality? I mean, that, that, that clearly is a risk. Uh, and all of the drivers in terms of uh, a performance of growth and indeed the US, frankly, haven't changed in the last couple of days. But it may be the case that at some point, and as I said earlier, I don't think we're quite there yet, at some point we reach a, the level of valuations which really are a prohibitive of future um, absolute and relative outperformance. The US has clearly been a leader or the leader in global markets for more than a decade, significantly outstripping returns elsewhere. Why? It, because it's delivered superior fundamental earnings rules driven by higher margins, higher revenue growth than that that we've seen elsewhere. So there's, there's clear sense in terms of those excess returns that investors in the US market have enjoyed in the sense they've been driven by fundamentals. But investors are paying a lot more for those successful companies, which a large part, an increasingly large part of the US, paying a lot more than they were before. Uh, I think part of this is due to the fact that recession has entrenched the position of winners, but it's also clearly about policy, easy policy, negative real rates are supportive of equities and supporting long duration growth, which constitutes a large part of the US market. So I think the outperformance of growth against value is extreme, the outperformance of the US against other markets is also uh, looking pretty stretched relative to history, uh, and the value of value is quite extreme as well in terms of being cheap relative to history. But on balance, I think recent trends probably will continue to prevail for the time being, helped by policy and superior fundamentals for those businesses. Longer term, many US companies, I think we have to acknowledge, are winning not only because of superior innovation on their part, but also in many instances due to lack of effective competition across many sectors high barriers to entry. So this point about regulation as well as valuation, those two aspects longer term, I think are, are the key, key, key areas that may ultimately lead to the ending of US dominance. Right, but you're saying that's quite a bit further longer term than now. Right, so Zared, moving on to your longer term outlook for the US. Um, obviously, it's had a very strong rally. We've had a, say, a bit of a sell-off in the last couple of days. Will it continue to thrive or not? Uh, are there opportunities outside the tech sector? Is it still going to be the tech sector that is the next stage? Yeah. On, on the tech side, we think there are still opportunities, and they are quite varied. It doesn't have to be in the fangs, which arguably could carry some risk of... Um, investor concentration, at least in the short term. Um, absolutely valid to think about it long term. And we think there are opportunities through various parts of the tech space, uh, not just around the platforms. Uh, the whole ecosystem is interesting and there are ways to play uh, the ecosystem like the Amazon ecosystem, but without being invested into um, that specific company. Um, outside technology, we're very exposed to healthcare and within healthcare to medical technology. And um, that's where we see an attractive long-term structural growth driver. Um, and again, there are some varied opportunities, whether it's in genomics, whether it's in uh, home care opportunities uh, or uh, patient monitoring uh, with remote patient monitoring being an important emphasis post the pandemic crisis. Um, so again, some good opportunities there. The importance of thinking long-term means you can really uh, look at capturing some long-term uh, structural trends. The other area, uh, which is somewhat related to technology, but where you can gain exposure through the industrials, is uh, the trends towards increased robotics and automation. We think that will continue. It could potentially accelerate if we've got a trend towards uh, onshoring or nearshoring, which is what some commentators are talking about post-pandemic. Um, and that can be an attractive potential long-term trend. And then, of course, the whole aspect of uh, infrastructure spend being channeled on uh, greener uh, initiatives, whether it's green energy, uh, greener buildings, green forms of transportation, 
all of which is leading to some interesting opportunities across these three uh, end markets effectively. And then finally, let's not forget uh, post-pandemic, uh, there will be an increased focus on hygiene and that trend will be there to stay, whether it's food hygiene or premises hygiene, both domestic and professional premises. And there again, there are a few companies that could be uh, interesting and we'll be seeing some strong um, tailwinds. Thanks very much, Sarah. Clearly, a lot of these trends and these sectors you identified have been helped uh, in a way uh, by the coronavirus impact because things like infrastructure spending will increase and healthcare obviously has been a beneficiary and technology. And I think it's fascinating that you're finding opportunities outside the fangs, really across the spectrum. Um, Fran, what's your long term outlook for the ARS here? Are you, are you seeing technology driving it forward? Are you seeing opportunities in other sectors? Yeah, no, I think I think technology is an important part of the market, obviously. And, and, and as mentioned prior, it's pervasive. It's not just in the technology sector. It's in the industrial sector with the Internet of Things. Um, it's in the market exchanges. We own a company called CME Group, a derivative, derivative exchange operator that is almost all technology. So I think that's important. And even in, in something as basic like a railroad, you see next generation technologies helping them become more efficient. So I think those are all important parts of the market that are you know, longer term in nature where technology is really becoming pervasive. And it's not just simply you know, a semiconductor company or you know, a, a you know, cloud computing company. Um, and and you know, we've looked at other opportunities like within the infrastructure of such. So we own a data center provider um, called Digital Realty. And what they do is they provide the data centers you know, for the cloud computing. So, you know, they build the properties, you know, we get a competitive dividend off of that and they participate in the global growth of this. So, you know, I think there are many ways you can look at it without buying companies trading at hundred, you know, hundred time multiples, um, you know, and we own a company like Texas Instruments that, that, you know, has the internet of things type, you know, applications in industrial and in automotive, you know, where you can get sort of broad exposure to increasing technology content in very generic, basic, you know, whether it's an automobile or whether it's a tractor or whether it's another industrial application. So I think that there are, you know, technology is pervasive, but I think it's clearly not limited to, to a certain subset of names trading at high multiples that are very crowded trades, you know, broadly speaking. So I think that's our job as managers is to focus on where we find the best, you know, combination of growth, but, you know, buying these at fair prices. Great. Well, a lot of optimism over there and a lot of opportunities uh, for you as U.S. investors. Um, I'd like to very much thank our managers for joining us today. It's great to hear their views on the US. But I'd like to emphasize, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Investment is for the long term, and it's important to have a well-balanced portfolio. If you're in any doubt, you should talk to a financial advisor. Thank you so much for watching.